Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us. This is The Run-Up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And my name is Uche, Uche Chuku Onoda. Well, um, it's going to be a very um, interesting edition of the program. It's a maiden edition, but we're, we know that you have been there and anticipating this program. And finally, it's here and we're happy to have you join us. We couldn't start a little bit earlier than now. But mm. hopefully. Uh, next time it's not going to be like this. Yeah, but when you were coming, what's your, what was your experience like on the road? Uh, the traffic was very, very crazy, especially on the Third Mainland Bridge. It was really packed. At some point, it's like when you have an enemy, the, first, the best thing to wish them is, may Lagos happen to you. <laughs> 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 okay, but let's hope that it doesn't happen to the other people who might need it. And uh, sometimes people get fired because of, of the traffic in Lagos. But this is the rundown, and we're hoping that uh, on the program, uh, we are going to be addressing issues that people who need to listen will listen to and make some adjustments that will make our, our country better uh, from here on out. Well, our first guest this morning is going to be the Director General, Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, Dr. Doyin Okupe. He will be talking on the prospects of the party and the skirmishes regarding the recently published list of the members of the campaign council. That will be the first uh, guest that we'll have. And we will also be joined by one of the recipients of the recent awards conferred on deserving individuals by President Muhammad Buhari. His name is Obanago Ibrahim. He's arrived in Lagos from Kogi State for greener pastures, but ended up with only a security job. Uh, in spite of the fact that he was a qualified teacher with a national uh, certificate in education, his story is quite interesting and inspiring at the same time. Yeah. There is also one more guest that we will have. And trust me when I say the youths, celebrities and all are catching the political bug. But our intention is to always discover mostly young Nigerians who are still in the closet, as it were, and bring them to light. If you stay with us, you'll get to know who this is. But for now, let's keep it hush-hush. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll do the interview with Dr. Okupe. We have as our guest uh, Dr. Doyin Okupe, who is the Director General of Labour Party's Presidential Campaign Organization. We are so honoured to have you join us on the show uh, today, sir. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah. First of all, we congratulate you for retaining your position as the DG of the Presidential Campaign Organization. You had been there. Uh, there are some lists that came up and all that, and then you still retain that position. We're so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So right now, uh, the campaign has started, and the first thing we're hearing, or one of the first things we're hearing from your party, is that uh, there may have been a mistake in the list that came out. So can you throw more light on on that before we continue? Well, you know, there's a there's a lot of difference between a mistake and errors. <laughs> Okay. It may be semantics, but well, there, definitely there were some errors of omissions, there were some errors of commission, and I would have been surprised if we really didn't have such things for such a, I mean, for such a list that uh, came up to about 1,200. But um, the party and the campaign organization, we are putting heads together to clean out, you know, and attend to the uh, issues in general. Also, there were issues about... Um, Sokoto, Lagos, uh, campaign, I mean, campaign coordinators, all those things, you know, we've listened. You know, we, we are politicians and we are a different set of politicians. You know, we don't force our way. We've done something. A couple of people, I mean, many people have had issues with it. We are listening to everybody and we're going to take this into very major considerations. And shortly, we will publish an updated list, a new one. We've seen some of these, um, well, I know you wouldn't like the word problems, uh, arising from other political parties where they make some mistakes, appoint some people, some of them are dead already, and they're still inside um, a list that should be for the living and all that. We expect that the Labour Party should be more diligent than this. Should be, we be worried that there are some things that really are not the way they look? Nyango, this is uh, a human organization. And uh, we also have interfacing problems. You know, this list is put together by quite a wide range of you know, cent you know, centers of influence across the nation. Then the party, 
then the campaign organizations, etc., etc. So, you know, these errors are not, uh, they, they can be avoidable, there's no doubt about it. But in, for which we are profusely apologetic, profusely apologetic. But also, you must understand that um, we are an organic movement. And in organic movement, you know, one of the side effects is what you have just seen on, in, our, in, in our, you know, makeup. But, you know, we are, we're going to take, we're, we're taking care of it and we're moving on with our program. One of the problems, uh, one of the complaints of um, one of uh, a chieftain of the Labour Party, uh, I think the um, publicity secretary or so, uh, was that you in particular shouldn't have been the DG of the campaign council coming from the south and the presidential candidate also coming from the south. And if you're retaining your pro uh, position and still seeing how you can adjust one or two things, is it going to affect you or how are you addressing that particular issue? You must understand that the Labour Party is a young party in terms of national prominence and national competitiveness. You cannot compare it with far more established uh, you know, institutions, political institutions like PDP or, AP, uh, or APC that have had tons and tons of, you know, turnover of campaigns and all that. And they've had, you know, they've made constitutional provisions that restricts them into a certain uh, way of appointing, uh, you know, appointing officials. The Labour Party, uh, we came to the Labour Party, I was already the campaign manager for B, uh, for Peter B. So naturally, when we got into the Nobel Party, you know, I had to, I mean, Nobel Party was new to him completely. So I had to continue in that position. Before we go to the Labour Party, the Labour Party has already got in its structure. They have gone to their convention, and by the dictates of their own constitution, they've already elected a national, uh, in, you know, their complete national working committee, which is headed by a Christian. So do you understand? So, you know, that, wasn't, that was not, you know, we, we did not have the opportunity, like PDP, of actually going to a convention where everything is open and available to you. You then decide, okay, we will give this one to, to the north, we will give this one to the south. We didn't have that, that luxury. The, the, com the complement of National Working Committee was already on ground. So we came in, you know, Peter Obi and myself and others, you know, other, our other supporters. I was his ca campaign manager. We had gone around the country together in PDP. We've done so many things together. So I still remained his campaign manager, you know, even while we joined uh, uh, Labour Party. But really speaking, um, the issue that uh, Adiba, I mean, uh, Arabambi, who was, who was the public secretary, raised, they are quite unfortunate because he seems to be a spoiler. He's uh, like a dog in the manger. He's the only person talking like that. I can, we went for a, 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 a political event that, you know, a, a press conference where the list of the PCC was, uh, was uh, uh, you know, was made public. I only addressed the press conference. I did not announce anybody's names. And, you know, present, you know that press conference was, uh, was presided over by the national secretary of the party who publicly announced that he was representing the chairman of the party. Do you understand? And when I finished my press conference, you know, and as I sat down, the microphone was given to the national organizing secretary, who has the power, the constitutional power, to arrange and conduct all the affairs of the party with relationship to elections. He was the one who read out the list, not me. Okay, it, it be, has nothing to do with me. Be that as it may, yeah. um, one of the some of the contending issues in the in in the policy right now, Muslim Muslim ticket for some parties and um, the others, uh, national president and the candidate coming from one zone and so on. And now Labour Party and someone is talking about uh, you being Labour, a Labour Party. I'm not a candidate. Yeah, no, no, but you, I'm not you, a candidate. So neither, neither is neither no, no, is no, no, your child. No, no, no. You I'm in PDP, so for instance. I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying to make a point, sir. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think, even though you called the person who raised the issue a spoiler, do you think his points that he raised may be valid in some way? For other parties, I've just that's why I give you that background. The Labour Party is on the on the larger political scene in Nigeria is new. And how we came about to be 
you know, to, to, to clinch the presidential candidacy is also fortuitous. You know, the party was already in, post, in place. They've had their congresses and conventions. The National Working Committee had been selected, elected, so, so to speak. So, you know, it was for them to now pick a presidential candidate. Or there were so many candidates, all the other candidates, you know, who could have been Muslim or Northerner, et cetera, et cetera, stepped down, okay. all right, for, for Putaubi. So it was, it was an in, inadvertent development. There was nothing the Labour Party could do about it. But the more important thing that is important on the national scale is that, you know, because the chairman, the DG campaign are totally of not, no serious relevance in terms of government, you know, forming government. You know, we're just, for instance, me, I'm just a campaign officer. No, no, no more, you know, nothing else. I'm just a campaign officer. By the by end of February, when the elections are over, my, my job is done. You okay. understand? <clears throat> so, but the critical issue is that when you are planning to rule the country, then you've got to pay very serious attention, you know, to the sensibilities of the country, you know, in, and things that happen within, within the polity. So the president must come from the north, if he does, or the south, and the vice president, vice versa. And there must be a mix, I mean, there must be a partnership, either a Christian and a Muslim, or a Muslim and a Christian. So do not compare the Labour Party with the, you know, with the... Uh, other parties. No, not the other parties, with the aberration of the, of the APC of picking a Muslim, Muslim ticket, or the incongruous uh, 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 situation in PDP where a northern candidate, or a presidential candidate, intends to succeed another, you know, northern presidential candidate. It, with Labour, we have, you know, all our hands are clean. Okay, uh, let me not bring other parties, um, unless it's absolutely necessary, into this conversation right now. But uh, are you being fair to, to Labour to call them a young party? They were there before the APC. No, no, I said young party in terms of upscale national politics. Labour Party has never, ever presented anything, any a presidential candidate in the last 10 years well, of this status. presented a governor. Of this, you know, governor, presidential candidate. Okay. Governor is provincial. Okay. All right? Presidential candidate is a different, is a different ball game altogether. There are 36 governors in the country. There's only one president. It's a different ball game. Okay. Um, let, let's look at what, um, okay, this is the time that is absolutely, nece ne absolutely necessary. Let's look at the APC, for instance. They came in in, like, 2013. Uh, there were other parties that were existing, and they, they merged together. Are we looking at a possibility of a merger? Because that merger gave them that kind of force that enabled them to oust a sitting president. But and the merger is a political debacle right now because they never had a true party. They had a special purpose political vehicle, all right? We are not contemplating a merger. But what I can announce to you here and now, and for a fact, is that I promised before, and, you know, it's still going to come, up, come, you know, come, come alive. We're going to put together the greatest grand political alliance in the country. We're going to have an alliance of labor, of, you know, all the other top parties, you know, besides the... You know, besides the uh, APC and PDP, they, we are going to form a grand alliance, including NNPP, including uh, SDP, including PRP, including ADC. We are coming together in an alliance. An alliance that not necessarily says that the presidential candidate of A must step down for presidential candidate of B. No. But, you know, an alliance that fosters the political fortune of the component parts of the alliance Nationwide, for instance, the, uh, INEC has ac actually published the the, the candidates Names, yeah. of each party. You know, we don't have the spread that covers the whole country. For instance, in the, you know in the Senate, you know, Dito NMPP, Dito SDP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we can come together and say, okay, wherever we do not have a candidate, we will back any candidate that is a member of the alliance. 
Do you understand? You know, so you know, we will come up with that. Because we were com I was coming to that because people are worried. Okay, we know. So that that answers the question of whether we're going to have yeah. enough men. Whether you have structure enough, which will in, include in the national assembly, not structure. No, no, whether no. we have enough, you know, men in the national assembly to promote the the presidential uh, the presidential. Uh, whatever okay. he requests from National Assembly and, you know, his policies, the passage of his bills, etc., etc. We will have enough people. Okay, but it goes beyond just the National Assembly. Um, for instance, when you go to a, every single polling unit, you need to have an agent and all that. So people begin to get worried. So when we talk about structure now, that is what they're looking at. So what are you going to do to address that beyond just trying to make sure that the people in the National Assembly that you don't have in your party are going to support it. We may be, you know, I'm going, you, we may be a young party. People may think, as I use the word deliberately, think or assume that we have no structures. We already know the number of polling stations in the country. And I'm telling you, take it from me. I am saying it. We will have no less than 10 people in each polling station across the country, across the 176, efforts are already underway. And I, can, I, mean, I mean, I don't, I don't like to keep it's unnecessary secrets. I can tell you that we are well past providing over 40% of, of, of that arrangement, covering over 40% of that arrangement. It's not a problem. It's not a problem for us. It's not a problem at all. It's peanut butter. Sometimes when we talk highly about the Labour Party, we tend to talk about the fact that Nigerians have keyed into it willingly, you know, without being coerced or without being bought over. That, that, or, that's what <laughs> unique. And, so, and that so, is the guarantee but, but that people, we are getting victory. Yeah. Because no other political party in the country has that. And guess what? We are being backed by the power and the strength and the force of youthful Nigerians for whom we have come out under this uh, platform to fight for this government, to take back the government from you know, those who are its present custodians and give it to the young people to run the affairs of themselves and take their destinies in their hands. And by the grace of God, we're going to succeed in doing that. Mark my words. So these people you're talking about, four or five or ten people in the polling unit, won't necessarily be members of the Labour Party? Are you we, banking we, on Nigerians who are just petrified? on our own. We, on our own, are making arrangements for no less than 10 persons per polling unit. Now, in that grand alliance, if other people come up with their own, so the number increases from 10 to 15 to 20 in different areas. Let me tell you, believe me sincerely, we are not joking with this election. And anybody who takes us for granted will, you know, will, will be struck you know, by, by lightning. You know, I mean, I'm talking about lightning of political development. Mm. That is what it is. This is a robust movement. This is a, you know, it's a tsunami. You know, you, well, there's no way you can prepare for a tsunami. When you hear that it is coming, you have only one choice, vacate. Because people pride themselves in structures. All right? A tsunami, you, you know it yourself, sir. Wherever a tsunami passes, do structures stand? They don't stand. You know, what is coming is what we have never seen before. And I'm telling you, we are riding on the, you know, we're riding on the tide of this gigantic, gigantic movement, and we're going to overrun the existing parties for a fact. I mean, can't you see that everybody, both left and right, PDP, do not, do, I mean, they don't, uh, they don't uh, criticize or, you know, attack uh, APC. APC does not attack PDP. All of them are attacking labor. And yet we are not so important. What the hell is it? Why? Well, Nigerians will be wondering how you're going to do that. It's interesting. Yes, we've seen... We uh, cannot be we've explaining... Seen a we cannot be explaining... We've seen a lot of what things. We're going to do. <laughs> okay. But the, the results of what we plan on the ground, Nigerians can see it. Mm. Do you understand? You don't have to go with an army to a war to know whether this army will win or not. When you begin to see bombings and demolitions and advancements, you know which army is going to win. Yeah, um, for a party that is credited with the slogan, we know they give shishi. We hope, we are thinking, will it be possible to maintain this tempo? People uh, are assuming words? that Niger Nigerians, we Nigerians may be bad, we may be corrupt, true. 
All right? But because, you know, we play along, you know, what, whatever, what, whatever goes, goes with us. But, you know, everybody has come to the realization that this is not going to go well for our future and the future of our children. If it is just that fast, that financial fast of one day, many Nigerians have made up their minds to do it. Look, we had, we had rallies all over the country. And the DG of campaign, of, uh, of uh, the presidential campaign for Labour Party, I'm telling you, I'm a Christian, I will not lie. We didn't give anybody shish to run those, those, those events. Mm. And I'm telling you, those who tried to play catch up with us spent billions. All right? So, you know, if they need 200 billion to do this election, we can, we can win it with 2 billion. That is just how, how bad it is. People are tired. People want a change. You can't bribe them any longer. You can't pacify them any longer. The young people are fed up to, to hear. And they will do anything and everything. And they know that we are sincere. And for, for, for goodness sake, we are, you know, we're also lucky that the, 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 the guy who is at the helm of the affairs is somebody that is competent, is capable, has integrity, has you know, proven capability and ability. So everything works, is working well for the Labour Party. Whereas the other parties are tumbling, fumbling, you know, without us, without any input from us. So I've never publicly, you know, uh, said anything against any of the parties. Never. I've never done anything surreptitiously, you know, to undermine them. But God is working for us. <laughs> okay. The, uh, the worry of some people is that... Um, while we say, like you rightly said, the youths are fed up, Every, a lot of people are fed up with the things that are going on without necessarily laying a blame on a person or a the group of The time for persons. blame is but, gone. But now, knowing the information we have from INEC, for instance, that of the new registrants, a lot of these people have been disqualified because of double registration. Not a lot. Not about so, 2.5 million or so. Not a lot. That's quite a out number. Of, no, out of 96 million. That's not... It's not a problem. This ninety six million will be shared by a lot of other candidates, mm -hmm. especially four candidates as we see. Because we, we have the APC, we have the PDP, we have the NNPP, and then we have the Labour Party. They will share this vote whether Nango, we like it or not. Nango, let me let me help you. Does that not worry you? Worry? When we are on top, what should I worry? Let me tell you what you do not know. You know the. Uh, uh, the electoral, uh, what do you call it, register for those who can vote eh? in, from the last election to now has increased by more than 50%. All right? The prior uh, 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 voting, voting uh, population, less than 40% less than of them normally vote. Okay? Now, this new increase, 80% of them are the young people and women who have decided to back Obi. Now, the PDP and the APC, from common sense, are not likely to get new voters. There's nobody who had gone to the uh, uh, voting, uh, voting station to register and get uh, 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 po uh, the polling, the po and what do you call it, the uh, voter's card, you know, that didn't go with some form of passion, determination, or anger. And who are you angry against? Is the existing formations on ground that they are agree against. So 70% of those new registrants are going to vote against these two political parties. And they are likely going to vote in favor of the new obedient movement. This, is, this election is, watch my mouth, a walkover. Interesting. <laughs> well, some people say that... Um, there will be sentiments in this election. There will be ethnicity. There will be a lot of things. We've heard from the West. There's a, a Milokon, which you are from, the this, West as this, well. This, this, We've this heard very, from the North also this that... This is a very interesting election. Now, we have never now, seen this before. Now, Northern we, people... We actually, have, have, we actually have, for the first time, an Igbo candidate in the election, a Yoruba candidate in the election. To, I mean, I'm talking about you know, those who have made yeah. their serious impact and two northern candidates in the election. It's never happened like that before. So, and also, 
you know, we know that the country presently is divided very strongly between Christians and Muslims. So there's a multiplicity of factors that will come in in this, in this election. Multiplicity of factors. It's, some of them are unfortunate, but realistically, everything, all the elements of the multiplicity are thoroughly mixed in our favor. All. Okay, let's hope that uh, your optimism will translate into it's something. Uh, I'm something. a scientist and I'm a realist. I've, everything I've said, I've backed with logic. I've told you, you know, those who are voting, you know, those who, the old voters, you know, they, are, they were used to voting for a PDP or APC, all right? The new people who went to register do not want to vote for APC or PDP, and there are more than them. So it's common sense. You can, what I expect you to tell me is that we do not have much penetration in the North. I will admit it. But guess what? God is on our side. I told you. We have October, November, December, January, February. Even if we crawl from Kaduna to Kano to Sokoto, we are going to get there. We will, the, the, northern, the northern masses and elites will join this train. Mark my words. And what gave you that confidence? The Nigerians, how much, you know, uh, the, the price of bread in, in, uh, in Sokoto or Kaura Namoda, is it different from Lagos and Idebodi or, or Enugu? It's not. The insecurity in the north is even far worse. I mean, it's worse than th those in the south. The impact of the economy today is worse. You know, the northerners are, are worse hit. So, you know, those who have voted in the north before because, you know, it's my person, it's my child's man, it's, you know, it's a Muslim like me. What did they get for it for the last 15 years? I mean, for the last eight years, what did they get for it? Nothing except suffering, pain, you know, and poverty. Do not let us assume that people have no sense. Assuming that if people do not go to school, they don't have sense. It's crazy. People are sensible. I've spoken to northerners, I've met northerners who said, look, we are not going to make a noise, we are not going to shout, but we are not foolish. They know where their butter will be, and where their bread will be buttered. You just wait. Well, we, we've, we've seen that when they were having um, primaries and a lot of people promised heaven and air to the candidates and when the elections came, those candidates didn't have, have one vote. That's why I keep saying we hope for the best when it, the time comes. Let's come a little bit personal before we wrap up on this segment of the show. Um, you have traversed the political tr terrain, as it were. Uh, you, were, you started out from NRC, I think, and then yeah. UNCP... Is that, was yes, that, that was progression. Yes, yeah. and then at one point you even were an aspirant of uh, PDP governorship election in correct. Ogun State. In Ogun now State, correct. you are in LP. Of all the plethora of um, parties. But hold on, no. the way you have said it is as if, uh, you know, when I was in NRC, there was only like PDP. You yes, understand? NRC, those, SDP. SDP. Mm -hmm. those were, so, you know, make a distinction because there are a lot of young people who we now, from what you are saying, think that our Cooper was jumping from NRC <laughs> to uh, UNCP to... No, no, no. Okay. That's not correct. The, the concern is that you uh -huh. know the political terrain. And I say Be that. Having That's had, fine. Having had experience very, in a lot of correct. them. Good. Very, very correct. So why did you now, of all the political parties, decide to pitch your tent with the Labour Party? I followed my leader. I followed Peter Obi. We left PDP together because of the unjust nature of their, uh, you know, of their, you know, proposed presidential primaries. Then, it did not give a chance. It didn't give us a chance. It was over monetized and, you know, it, it was, you know, hypocritical. They have decided where the party was going to go. The party was going to subvert its own constitution by refusing to rotate the presidency to the north according to what the constitution provided. So, what, what shall we be doing there? Nothing. So, you know, when Peter Obi decided to leave and join the Labour Party. I, do, I followed Peter Obi to the Labour Party. You talked as if uh, it doesn't matter what the ideologies are. I'd like to know the ideologies inside the no, Labour Party. No, 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 that, that is not enticed true. That's your not true. master and yourself. I know that, you know, Peter Obi sat down when we left PDP. We sat down and we looked at who, which party best suits our inclination, political inclination. We had two of them, SDP and Labour Party. We could not find immediate accommodation in SDP. So because Labour Party 
is, you know, is a, you know, a platform to support, assist production, to support workers. So that came very close to what we wanted. So we went to the Labour Party. When, when we say we want to increase, we want to shift the country from consumption to production, you know, Labour Party is the only party in the country today or then that had something similar to that. Because the Labour Party is made up of people who are engaged in the production processes. So that's why we went there. It was a natural inclination. We went towards where, you know, we felt that our ideologies came fairly close. It was not an irresponsible decision or just a jump, you know, jump into the fray, no. Okay. For every opportunity that a politician has, I think they should be talking to our people as well. So um, let's talk to Nigerians. You talk to Nigerians, what your expectations are, what you think their role should be as well before we get to the election month proper. Thank you. I don't want Nigerians to take my word for it. I'm a politician, like you said, but let us critically look at it. There's no Nigerian today who does not have fear in his mind, existential fear, because of the hardship, the pain that we're all going through. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, you are not insulated from the harm that you know, the present situation you know, has brought upon us. We are not safe in our homes. We are not safe on our roads. You know, you know, it, everything is so bad. So people, and people took a decision some time ago. And that basis of that decision was on expectation that somebody's body language was enough to save the country. Apparently, it has, it has proven that that is not true. This time around, I am charging Nigerians to be careful. Do not vote on sentiments. Do not vote on the basis of religion. Do not vote because of hatred or love for a particular ethnicity or ethnic group. Vote on who you can trust. This election is about trust. It's about integrity. You know, if you cannot trust people, if people have been given opportunities and they have shown no capabilities at all, or they have, they have demonstrated lack of integrity, we can't give them another chance. We are in dire situations, and these dire situations requires a square peg in a square hole. Peter Obi is the man for this moment, and Labour Party is the party to, to back up in an election. God bless you. Okay, we've been talking with Dr. Doyin Okukwe, uh, famous Doyin Okukwe, and today he's here talking about Labour Party and why he is in the Labour Party and why you need to uh, queue behind them. Well, it's been a pleasure having you, Doctor, uh, on our program today. We hope to hear more from you and your Labour Party. Shishi or no shishi? <laughs> <laughs> we are waiting on the other side. Good luck to we you and your party. Shishi. <laughs> and we always, uh, I will always ask Nigerians, to go and verify. Yeah. Whatever a candidate says, I'm this, I'm that, go and verify. <laughs> Thank you very much. That will be all uh, on this segment of the show. The show continues in a moment. Stay with us.